Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 from the May 2016 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Okay, so a bit of a disclaimer before I get into the solution. So I think that there was an error in the paper, but I could be wrong about that. So I'm going to work this question in two ways. One, using the assumption that the question, the information presented is correct and there's no error. And the second way will be based on that, on my assumption of what, what it was supposed to be. All right. So with that being said, let's get into the question. Okay. So it says three employees working in the Guru country earned gross monthly income as follows. So we have S Dabo 4,800, E Jacob 2,400, R Sharp 8,000. And it says in the Guru country, the first $2,500 earned in, is treat, earned in treated, earned is treated as non-taxable income. Earnings above 2,500 is subject to tax at various rates as follows. So here they have taxable income between $1 and 2,500 is 0%. That's the error I was talking about. Let me come back to it, right? Then taxable income between 2,500 and $1 and 5,000 is 15%. And then we have taxable income between $5,000 and one and over 30%. They could have just said over $5,000, right? So the error I think is this. So they're telling you that the first 2,500 um, in income is treated as non-taxable. And then they're saying that the, that the first 2,500 of taxable income is not taxed. So I think that this was the error. So I think that they shouldn't have put the word taxable here or well, anywhere else in this table. Right? It should have, oops, sorry, it should just have been that income between this is taxed at 0%, which would be corroborated by what they said in the sentence here. Right? And then income between 2,500 and 5,000 is taxed at 15%, as can be seen there. And then income over 5,000, <clears> right, is taxed at $3,500. Right? But again, I'm going to work it two ways. I'm going to work it one based on the assumption that this is exactly what they meant here. Sorry. Right. This is what they meant here. And then I'm going to apply my assumption. So let's go. So let's start with S Darbo. So S Darbo, right, 4,800. And what we have, so you see in down here, it says um, gross income, then non-taxable income to give us taxable income. So let's, let's populate those things, right? So gross income for S Darbo is 4,800, non-taxable income is 2,500, and you subtract those two to get taxable income of 2,300. Now, according to this table, taxable income up to 2,500 is not taxed. So tax rate applicable there is 0%, income tax is therefore zero, and income after tax is the full 4,800, right? Uh, e Jacob is next. So let's populate for E Jacob and then explain. So for E Jacob, he or she earns 2400 Your non-taxable income is 2500 So although you have a negative taxable income, we don't really count it as negative. It's just not counted. You have no taxable income. Therefore, you pay zero tax and you keep your whole 2400 Now, for R sharp, that's where it got a little complicated because R sharp, check what happens here, right? So you're seeing like a kind of triple, triple way split here. But let's start from the, from the right, left-hand side, sorry. So 8000 was the gross income. You take away your allowable or your non-taxable income and you get 5500 and I split the 5,500 into three pieces. The first 2,500, then the second 2,500, and then everything else above that. Why did I do that? Because it said here, the first $2,500 of income is taxed at 0%, right? And that's taxable income. So his taxable income was 5,500, the first 2,500 of which he pays no tax on. Well, he or she, right? And then taxable income between 2,501 and 5,000, is taxed at 15%. So right. So after the first 2,500, he still he or she still has um how much 3,000 left of tax. The first 2,500 out of that that next 3,000 is taxed at 15%, which gives an income tax of 375. And then 25 and 25, as you can see here, is 5,000, and there was still 500 left of tax, and that would be in the remaining tax bracket of 30%. So you're seeing that it's it's um. It's a, it's a 150 tax income tax on that thing. So now the only person who has tax here. So what do we do with the tax? We take the income tax, which would be 525, and we subtract it from the gross income to give us income after tax. All right. Okay. So now I want to show you how I interpreted the question a bit differently in a way that I think makes sense. So just give me one second. Let me switch across to that screen. Okay. So basically we're seeing the same table here with a couple of slight differences um, down here. But let's, let's populate. So the first person is S Darbo. 
So S Darbo earned forty eight hundred dollars. The first twenty five is non taxable. So therefore, you take forty eight hundred and subtract twenty five hundred to be left with twenty three hundred, right? So the income above twenty five hundred but less than five thousand is taxed at fifteen percent. So S Darbo has twenty three hundred dollars above the non taxable twenty five, which means that that twenty three is taxed at fifteen percent, which gives an income tax figure of three forty five. We subtract that from the gross income figure to give income after tax of forty four fifty five. Now for E Jacob. E. Jacob said that's $2,400, so guess what? E. Jacob pays no tax. For our shop, right, this is where it gets a little interesting again, $8,000. So we're going to populate our shop. Right, so $8,000 minus $2,500 gives us a $5,500 left. But that's split into two tax brackets. Right, the first $2,500 over the non-taxable $2,500, and then the remaining amount of income left after that, which in, which in um, our shop's case would be $3,000. All right, in addition to the 2500 So the first 2500 that is taxable is taxable at a rate of 15%, giving us 375 worth of income tax there. The remainder is taxed at 30%, giving us a $900 income tax figure there. The total there will be 1275 Subtracted from 8000 gives us 6725 Okay, so there's a second part of the question. Let me just rearrange my screen. I'll check it back shortly. Okay, so it says other compulsory deductions from income include these, so national insurance, 5% of gross pay, health insurance, 4% of taxable income, and pension contributions, 1% of gross pay. So I'm going to, as you can see down below, I've put in those particular percentages. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to do this two ways as well. I'm gonna do it using the initial information and then using my information, okay? So let's take a look at it. Okay, so let's start with S Darbo. Right, so income after tax was 4,800 because apparently, Based on the, that interpretation, there was no income tax to pay. So national insurance would be 5% of gross. So S Darbo's gross income is 4800 So we find 5% of that, which will give us 240 Health insurance is 4% of taxable income. This is taxable income here for S Darbo, 4% of which is 9200 Pension contribution is 1% of gross. So 1%, oops, um, that shouldn't be in percentages. Right. So 1% of gross is 1% of 4,800, which is 48. So your total deduction now would be the sum of these three things. You subtract that from the 4,800, you get 4,420. All right. For E. Jacob, right, income after tax is the same as income before tax because there was no tax for E. Jacob. Right, so you had 120, 5% of gross, 5% of 2,400 is 120. Right, 4% of taxable income, so there was no taxable income. So I'm not entirely sure how E. Jacob is paying health insurance, and if he's paying none, then that might be a problem. Uh, pension contribution, 1% of gross. So, so again, hold on, let me just fix that. Right, to 24. Right, total deductions, 144, subtracted from 2400, giving us 2256. All right. And then for our shop, so we have the 7475 brought down here. National insurance is 5% of gross, which is 5% of 8000. Health insurance is 4% of taxable income, which is 4% of that figure. All right, uh, sorry, I don't know why these things were not dollars, right? So $80, 1% of gross, right, is that figure. And then total deduction is the sum of these three things here. And subtract that from your income after tax, giving you a net pay, right? So again, this was, um, this was done using the initial assumption, which again, I think was not the correct assumption. So I'm gonna go into my version of it. Okay, so if we use my information from the assumption I made about the tax brackets being incorrect, all right, so S Darbo, we're gonna pull the 44, 45. So again, 5% of gross, 4% of taxable. So yeah, 1% of gross was $48. We add all three deductions to, for a total of 380, subtracted from 44, 55, giving us net pay of 40, 75. E Jacob now, so E Jacob, um, again, income after tax was the same as the gross income because E. Jacob did not have any income tax to pay. 5% of gross was 120. 4% um, of taxable income, well, they had no taxable income, so <laughs> no, no health insurance apparently. Pension contribution, 1% of gross. Total deduction is 144. 144 from 2400 gives us 2256. And for our shop now, we pull the 6725 down here. 5% of gross gives us the 400. 
4% of taxable income is 4% of 5,500, which gives us that figure there, right, which is 220. And yeah, there, there was an error before I fixed it. <laughs> and then the 8%, 8, and then pension contribution is 1% of gross again, which gives us that. So we have total deduction of 700 from 6725, giving us 6025. Okay, we just have a couple of little theory pieces to go. Let's do those quickly and call it a day. Okay, so the final part, we have distinguished between statutory and non-statutory deductions. So statutory deductions are required by law and non-statutory are not required by law but are voluntary. So statutory, required by law, non-statutory, right, purely voluntary, not required by law. That's the important part there. And the final thing to talk about in this question is name three basic source documents with the payroll. So, I mean, there's a whole list of them, but this is what I put. Right, time cards, employment contracts, time sheets, attendance registers, sign in or sign out sheets or books. If you guys have any others, you can put them in the comment section below. And that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so let me know what you thought in the comments about there being a possible error in this question. I'm very interested to know what your thoughts on the matter are. If you want to check out more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and to click the notification bell so you know every time I release a new video. And don't forget to check out my website for free PayWay handouts. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.